Which one? Sure. Toby uh, Trey, uh, CEO and co-founder of SparkSwap. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And co-organizer of this meetup. Thank you. Yes. Co-organizer of this meetup and hopefully, hopefully many more to come. This is definitely. I'm super excited about this. Um, I think re I'm realizing now that we started the Lightning Developers Meetup like maybe six months too late based on the number of people who turned out. Um, uh, better late than never. But that's really great. So, um, yeah, as as Liz said, um, I'm Trey. I'm the uh, founder and software engineer at a company called SparkSwap. Um, we uh, built a way to trade cryptocurrency without giving up custody. Um, so we ha we're a non-custodial cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, we use Lightning Network Atomic Swaps to make that happen. Uh, and we support Bitcoin and Litecoin right now. We just went to mainnet like three weeks ago. So if you like Congrats. trading less than $2,000 of Bitcoin and Litecoin, please go to sparkswap.com and check it out. Um, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about a feature that Connor did not mention that's new to 0 0.6. Um, there's also a C Lightning version of it uh, that's called um, Hold Invoice or Hold Invoice. Um, and it's very exciting for me, and you'll see why soon. Um, but before we go into specifically what that feature is, I'll talk a little bit about um, HDLCs and how they work in Lightning, although for most people here, that will just be a refresher. Um, and then I'll talk about the mechanics of total invoice or delayed settlement, if you want to call it that. Um, and then finally, I'll spend a little bit of time talking about um, potential applications of this new technology, because I think it's a, a pretty exciting one. Um, so HDLCs. Uh, I think most people here you know, know how these work. Uh, this is what all the payments in Lightning are. Um, the person who's paying pays into this contract that allows them to either refund it back to themselves after a time lock, or if the payee reveals the payment to the hash, they can claim that payment for themselves. Um, every payment on Lightning does this, and really you know, the way I think about it is as soon as this HTLC is set up, it's an irrevocable promise of payment, um, which is actually an extremely unique instrument that we really haven't seen before. Um, and so when we think about an HDLC on Lightning, it goes through kind of a given life cycle for every HDLC. And this is sort of a simplified view. Uh, but basically, the payee creates uh, an invoice, which is you know, a pre-image that they then hash. Uh, and then they send that, you know, the hash of that pre-image to the person who wants to pay them, usually in the form of an invoice encoded via Bolt 11. Um, they send that out of band. You've probably seen them on Twitter. Um, they usually start with LN1, I think. Um, and then uh, at that point, the payer can extend an HTLC to the payee. Um, and as soon as the payee accepts it, the payer cannot back out. So at that point, until the timeout, um, the payer can't revoke it. Um, and it's up to the payee to either reveal the pre-image or not. Um, and so these HTLCs kind of get satisfied through three different paths, roughly. Uh, the first path is the payee reveals the pre-image and the balance of Bitcoin moves um, and everyone's pretty happy. The other is the payee has the option to cancel the pre-image. And then the third is that it goes on chain, either because there was a connection breakdown or the HTLC is about to time out. But in any event, we can still always go back to just settling the HTLC on the blockchain. Here I've kind of illustrated it as the payee you know, claims with the pre-image the payout on the blockchain. Um, and the payer can see that pre-image anytime they want. Um, so that's HTLCs. Uh, when we talk about multi-hop HTLCs, uh, it's really the same thing. It's the same life cycle, except that the, there's an intermediary in the middle who first accepts the first HTLC before extending the second one. And they all use the same hash, so this whole thing is an atomic chain. Um, and basically, the you know the settlement works pretty similarly, where you know first the second HTLC settles, and then the first HTLC settles. So it gets set up forward, and then settled backwards. Um, so before I move on, are there any questions about HTLCs? I assume most people here know about those, but in case they don't. OK, cool. Um, so the life cycle that a uh, uh, Lightning invoice goes through um, you know, basically mimics this. So if you, you know, think about random Lightning node that you're connected to here, um, you would create an invoice, you get the Bolt 11 back, and you can do something with it. Um, and then an HTLC would come into your Lightning node, and then you'd get BTC balance. That's how the normal, the normal way it would work, um, is your node would just automatically look for the hash that you know, corresponds to this invoice, look up the pre-image, and then just settle it automatically on your behalf. Um, most of the time, that's what you want. Um, the other alternative is 
you know, your lightning node looks up this hash. There is no pre-image. There's no invoice associated with it. It just cancels the HTLC backwards. Um, you know, this was the wrong node or whatever. Uh, we don't have this HTLC, so we don't, we don't want it. Um, and that works pretty well. I mean, for normal payments, that works really well, obviously, for uh, all the people that have used Lightning to date. Um, but there's a new feature, uh, which I call delayed invoice settlement, which I think is really powerful and allows a bunch of new, um, a bunch of new applications. And basically, all you're doing is taking that same lifecycle where you create an invoice, an HTLC comes in, but you delay before you actually settle it. Um, and so it, it's really, it's the exact same life cycle as before, but instead of your node on your behalf making a decision about whether to settle or cancel an HTLC, you can do something else to decide whether or not to do that. Um, so specifically, and this is getting into some L&D specific um, ways of doing it, uh, you can create an invoice and then subscribe to updates on that invoice. And then when the invoice state changes to something like accepted, you can execute some business logic and then settle that pre-image after you've done your business logic, uh, which I think is really nifty. Um, <laughs> you can also sometimes, if you want to, like cancel that HDLC based on the outcome of the business logic. So it's the whole life cycle is kind of in your control. Um, and specifically for L&D, the RPCs that have been added that let you do this are in the new RPC, uh, invoices RPC subserver um, that Connor <laughs> mentioned. So the first one is add hold invoice, so it's actually a different RPC than the old one, which was just add invoice. Subscribe single invoice, which again is a different RPC. The other one was subscribe invoices. Um, and then there's two other ones to finalize the state. One is settle invoice, and the other is cancel invoice. So you kind of, you do have to take more responsibility because um, you know normally the node kind of protects you from doing silly things like letting an HDLC timeout. At least right now, I don't think it protects you like that, so you kind of have to manage these things yourself. It will in the future. It will in the future? Okay, that's good to know. Um, but at least for right now, like I think it gives you a lot of powerful tools to get into the life cycle of the HTLC. Um, all right, before I move to applications, questions on the delayed settlement aspect? Hold invoices? Yeah. What about the balance of the wallet? Um, how, the, how like an active HTLC is reflected in yeah. the balance? Um, I don't know exactly how that's reflected when you have... Uh, so it's just it's deducted, so it's kind of like a limbo until it's settled. So I said in like five uh, Satoshi, that's like kind of like, I guess it's not going to be five, I'm just setting it until it's settled. If, it get, if it's getting time out of cancel, then it gets restored back to the balance. Any other questions? It's really nice to have the developers here. What's up? The maximum for the timeout? Uh, so the timeout, so because it's based on whatever the HTLC is. So the default value in the bolt, I think, is nine if you're the endpoint um, and the default value for like a routing node is 144 blocks so nine blocks sorry uh, like 90 minutes um, but you can change that so you know if this is especially if this is an invoice where you plan to do something kind of fancy you can make that time out a lot longer um, it just needs to be harder to get people to route that payment to you because it's more time locked. I mean, I'll give you max like 65k right now but you have 16 so yeah that's pretty nice 65,000 blocks <laughs> Okay, so um, you know uh, the reason why I care about this is I think that um, it, you know in my opinion I think the applications that are going to really bring Lightning to mass adoption are things that are sort of uniquely able to be done on Lightning that you couldn't do with existing technologies, um, and I think there's a few of those already um, that we've seen today. Um, streaming payments for media or data is something that's really hard to do with existing technologies, but on Lightning is is not as hard to do. Um, the other one is obviously, you know, payments for fringe markets or cross-border, just people that like to spend Bitcoin. Um, you know, I, I think those are two really good use cases for Lightning today, but I think there, um, there are actually a ton of new use cases that really can't be done with any other system that can be done with Lightning once you have this kind of delayed settlement feature. Um, so I'll talk about a few of them, but it's just like a couple, and you should think about this section a little bit as like a dramatic reading of Alex Bosworth's tweets because <laughs> um, so they're probably almost all shamelessly stolen from his Twitter um, so the first one uh, is obviously SparkSwap this is like the main reason why I'm very excited about this is um, we actually forked LND like nine months ago to add a crappy version of this feature and now we can go upstream on LND and get a good version of this feature which is super exciting so 
we use um, hold invoice to do our cross-chain swaps. So there's payments on two Lightning Networks, the Bitcoin Lightning Network and the Litecoin Lightning Network that use the same hash. And then here on this node, we just have a hold invoice effectively that holds onto the payment on Bitcoin, holds onto the HTLC until it retrieves the pre-image from the Litecoin Lightning Network. So that's how we do the swap. We can do it both ways. Um, so that's really the core technology for us and why we think this is so cool um, and why I was like slacking you, Yoast about this feature. Um, the other Can one is. Can you turn off the lights again? It should just be motion. Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> the other one is uh, Lightning Loop, which uh, Connor talked about. Uh, super cool. This is on chain to off chain. Uh, so you can go from Lightning in your Lightning channel to your on chain wallet. Um, and, uh, you know, as I don't think Connor mentioned this, but they use hold invoices in that loop server. That's how they do it. They hold on to your Lightning payment until the on chain payment. Uh, they can actually retrieve the pre-image from the on-chain payment, which is why the loop server is like a trust-minimized, non-custodial solution. Um, a more general kind of version of both of those is what I call verified delivery. Um, so basically, it's sort of any system where you as the customer create a pre-image somehow on your own, um, and then you send a payment to some service provider, like in this case, like a pizza place. Um, you send a payment using the hash, and so the pizza, you know, the pizza place can't actually cash that payment yet. Um, but what they do is they, you know, deliver the pizza to you, and the delivery person gets the pre-image from you. Um, and the the delivery person can actually verify that the pre-image corresponds to the hash without being connected. Like they can be offline. They just have to do a SHA-256 computation. They check that it's the right pre-image. They'll give you your pizza, and then they'll take it back to the pizza place who can actually, you know, collect the payment. Um, for pizza, it's kind of like stupid, but for something that's really valuable, um, you know, this is what in the traditional finance world they would call a delivery versus payment settlement, um, and it's really hard to do quickly uh, and effectively. And this is probably the most sophisticated system in the world to do that. Um, the next one that I think is really interesting um, is instant refunds. So actually, Justin at um, Bit Refill first told me about this problem, where if you're a merchant on Lightning and somebody sends you a payment and then you have to refund it back to them, it's really problematic because the fees can vary. So somebody can set up an attack where they have some routing node that basically makes it so that they can steal fees from you as you're refunding them um, for payments. Um, with, when you can hold on to the HTLC, you can actually wait until you're sure you can provide service. So you know, for a merchant, you can like check stock or something like that before you actually settle the HTLC. And so your refund is basically just canceling the HTLC. Um, and actually, that that I think is like a broader point of when you pay with cash, refunds are really easy and really quick and fast and everything else. You just go to the merchant, same place you bought it, and they'll give you cash back. Um, but there is no online payment system that really does instant free refunds like this. Um, so I think there's a lot of really interesting applications um, to explore like what that takes advantage of free refunds, because you just can't do that today with anything else. Um, a couple of examples of like how potentially free re refunds might be used. Um, so if people are not familiar with Earn.com, it was a way, was, a, is, was, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a way to send people an email and you would only pay them if they replied to you. Um, and, uh, and the way you can do this in a sort of like more decentralized fashion is you can actually send them an HTLC, and you know maybe the message is like embedded or somehow related to it, um, and the person would only settle the HTLC if they return the message. You have to trust them that they're going to do that. You know maybe there's a way to have like a, a service provider in the middle who can't actually take the money themselves, but can make sure that the message is being passed or something like that. Um, so that's pretty neat. You can also reverse it um, to kind of prevent spam. So you could require that everyone who sends you a message include like a small HTLC. And um, everyone that you like and want to respond to, you can just like cancel their HTLC and send it back. So for people that you know, you can correspond for free. But for people that you don't want to talk to, it's really expensive to like spam people, um, which I think is a pretty cool property. Why do you think it's Yeah. Question uh, one more back. Yes. 
So is, your, is the idea that the merchant holds on to the HTLC and waits for some unknown time in the future when the customer wants to return something? Uh, well, yeah. So it would have to be it would have to be a system where either you hold on to it for a very long time, or you can sort of give reasonable assurance that you're going to be able to provide service to the customer. So I'm thinking more of like um, a customer orders like a hat or something, and it actually turns out you're out of stock of the hat. Like you probably could have figured that out if you had just like check if you had gone out to your whatever your stock database and checked. But it's like your website wasn't updated in time, and so the person tries to pay for this hat and they can't, and now you have to do a refund. Um, so for small checks like that, it's pretty easy to just like bring your inventory system into the flow. Um, you also could like pay for API call or something, and yeah. there's an issue with the API. Right. Know. Right. Yeah. I mean, so you can do really like small, quick checks very easily. If you wanted to, you could do like a longer check. You like um, make it part of your return policy. Yeah, you're like you have a nine blocks to return this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Um, yeah. Um, so another one was actually from the Boltathon hackathon. I don't know if people saw this, but I thought this was really cool. Um, it was by actually Carla KC on Twitter. Um, it was Lightning Poll. Um, so it was an application where you pay to participate in the poll by sending an HTLC, but whether your HTLC gets cached or, or like settled or rejected depends on the outcome of the poll. So like one way to use this would be, you know, if you're a content creator, you might want to survey your audience for like, oh, what you know, what do you want to see a video on next? But only the people who get what they want actually have to pay. Everybody else gets their money back. Um, you can do it in other ways too to make it like more of a game. But there's some interesting applications there where you can kind of guarantee payment. Um, Another kind of like version of that would be like an auction where you can guarantee payment of the item. So somebody can run an online auction where they, you know, solicit bids and to you know submit a bid, you have to actually put the HTLC up, and the person only settles the the highest bidder. Um, again, you could do this sort of in a, a trust minimized way by having you know an intermediary who actually just automatically only forwards to the person who's running the auction the highest bid and won't actually you know will cancel everything else. That's kind of nice because they can't actually steal the money. All they can do is, you know, either do their job well or not. Um, you can also think about this as like a Kickstarter, where you know everybody puts up HTLCs and they only settle all the HTLCs if um, if there's enough money raised total. Insurance contract. Yeah, that would work too. I mean, that is an insurance contract. Uh, well, that like a, a Kickstarter is like an yeah. insurance contract. Yeah, sure. Um, Another, another like really interesting version of this is like a payment mailbox um, or like a kind of a Venmo type of thing where if you're like right now, if you're a casual user of Lightning and you're not online all the time, it's really difficult to receive payments. Um, and so you could imagine a service that basically monitors your uptime and will hold on to invoices on your behalf and will only forward them to you when you're back online. Um, so the nice thing about that is you you know this intermediary can't actually take the money from you. Um, all they can do is potentially like not forward it to you or whatever. But you know ideally you're, you're paying them some amount of money for this service and they just wait for you to come back online. So as long as you come online like once a day or something like that, you could actually in theory kind of accept payments. I think there's some other kind of problems with that, but I think it could be an interesting way to build like a less centralized uh, Venmo, which would be cool. Um, so yeah, that's that's the applications that I have. Um, I'm sure there's a million more. You know, I think this is the kind of feature where once you kind of dig under the surface, there's actually like a whole new design space that hasn't been explored because it is something that's so new that we haven't ever really seen before. Um, my last plug is like, if you do want to work on this stuff, um, you know, we're hiring just like I think everyone who's working on Lightning right now. So um, come talk to me. We need the job board. Yes, we need the job board. The job of one over here. Thank you. Yeah, I think it could be annoying. I think we'll just have to see how it plays out. But I think it's so useful that it's sort of worth, worth doing. Uh, 
Uh, you could also just have two different channels, one that accepts very long delays but takes a lot of fees, and one that only allows short delays but takes fewer fees, so you right. get paid if you hold on to it for a long time. Does the pay, who sets like the delay? Is it just the payee? So, so the payer uh, computes the whole route, um, so they set the delay for every node, um, but you know, they have to take into account the you know, various forwarding policies of all the nodes on the route and the recipient, um, because those nodes will reject it if it doesn't meet their policies. So. Great, awesome, thanks.